Ooh, he's been on the porch for a while. Oh, this is heavy new figure smell. Uh, we got two alternate wings. Oh, ang uh, enraged hand. You could tell by all the veiny details. Oh, angry head. Nothing fell off. I was worried about that, but, oh, I like this. Okay, so before I do the usual and talk about the figure, uh, my usual setup is currently in the work for my giant June animation, which is, uh, I've had to delay myself working on it quite a bit this month, so it's not going to be as long as I hoped it would, but, yeah, and secondly, the box for the Tigrex. Oh my. My audio might sound scuffed here. I'm wearing a mask just in case my reflection shows. Ah, uh, can't even see it. It's just a good box in my opinion. Of course, we got the images that they used to uh, showcase the Tigrex which all look amazing. And this is gold and shining, it even feels out. It's just a good thing. And I'm pretty sure I think I start with sculpt first. Yeah, these things are unscripted as they can be. Tigrex, it is based on the model from Monster Hunter Rise, I'm guessing, which is a bit of a port from Monster Hunter World with a little bit of lower quality. And we do get a lot of nice, uh, scale, uh, sculpted detail in it. Even the wing membranes look really good. I didn't know he had chin spikes. I will double check the game after this. And if there is any blaring, uh, differences between the two, I will address them. The eye doesn't look very emerald green on this one. Uh, Looks more of like a blue. The mouth was done excellently. The tongue is very smooth. And I know Tigrex has uh, teeth on its tongue. The wings do look a bit odd from the back. But it's just really nice sculpted detail. And then the, the end of the tail as well. The underside. The legs and feet. And addressing the alternate parts are the rage parts which add a bit of a red tint or red in between cracks. And for the wings, they have an extra part which tabs into the arm, uh, rage part included, which actually allows you to easily tell which one goes to which side. That just allows the wings to fully extend whether it's like that, or an actual flight wing, which Tigrex doesn't really fly that much. So, the majority of the figure consists of this orangey, uh, sand yellow to represent the original's, uh, color scheme, and the blue stripes, which are present all throughout the figure, and they're pretty obvious when you look at it from anywhere. It's done mostly good. I mean, mostly excluding the parts where it goes over 
the spikes, it doesn't carry the same flare as it does normally. And it kind of looks a bit too contrasty with how Tigrex usually looks. And just too contrasty. I think the blue also shines a bit more than the orange. Towards the lower parts of the figure, it's got this maroon and a brown, maybe even black color scheme on the lower parts of the figure, including on the, the talons or paws. But I don't know what to call these. That, they do look good. The fade is a little extreme between here to here. Like, that's a little bit of an extreme fade. It's done way better on the back legs where the fade kind of starts here and goes through to here. Like this entire calf. Just looks better there. The wings also have a bit of a fade on every single bit of it. Even the uh, extra pieces have a fade. And the alternate parts are mostly the same about the fade. They just have the extra paint that goes in between. Which on the alternate head looks like this. And the underside is done in a uh, tan white, I think? I'm not sure I'm not the most notable on colors. Moving into the articulation, let's start with the ne neck. The neck, which usually will be situated like that in comparison to the back, can look fully down. Fully down. Not too far up, but there's a... yeah. It can look pretty almost directly to left and right and it could just look around the upper jaw is on a ball joint it can spread pretty far same with the lower jaw and its opening which gives a pretty wide uh, roar and the tongue there's the hinge so yeah, if you try to treat it like a ball joint, it will come off. But you could just slide it back on, as these figures tend to be. The wing system. So, it would appear that this is a sleeve part, which actually leads to there. We got the double uh, hinge for the elbow, which is limited by this membrane sculpt. So yeah, and then the base of the hand has a ball joint, but that also affects the wing, which plugs in on a ball joint, because this is meant to be removable to go onto the rage part, so I'll just take that off to show. Oh, and on this part, it hinges out. Sorry, it's on a ball joint. A uh, hinge here on this flap, this part's put on a ball joint, this is sculpted, or connected into the sculpt. There is a, I guess, wrist movement there, and then each finger is on a ball joint. Which can be really good, or if you have bad connection, it just comes off. Same system over here, except on mine, this part doesn't like to move with the whole arm. We have uh, an ab crunch here, which is made of two uh, barbell style ball joints. It has two sleeves on it. At least I think they're sleeves. They probably are. We got this section where we have a ball joint yeah, a ball joint for the base of the leg. Double hinge system. A uh, ball joint here at the upper ankle, I think? I don't know what to call it. 
and it's just another ball joint. This might, yeah, that's a sleeve. So it's a barbell to here to here. Then the tail is a system of ball joints, as they usually are. All right, so I might as well show rage parts since I'm gonna do that anyways. Just hold on to here, and that's how you get the arm off. If it doesn't want to come off, use heat. You don't want to break something. After all, this is a $150 figure. I would keep the initial uh, Tigrex holder and accessory box, just because I think it'd be easier to hold the stuff. So with the main wing membrane, which we pulled out, we can put it back on, maybe adjust the ball joint in there, and put it back in. You have to make sure the membrane part is the membrane of the elbow, arm, arm whatever this is, the other side of the elbow, you have to make sure it's in there. Then you could put this for on the front or the back. The advertising shows it on the front, but when it came out of the box, it was like this. That moves a little bit. I don't know to be concerned or not. That one doesn't... That moves, okay. Okay, for the head, just... And if it doesn't want to come off, use heat. And also heat to apply them if they don't want to go in. And that'll do it for the rage parts, which work exactly the same. They're just differently painted. While the rage part and uh, extended wing flaps are counted as accessories, which are more so just necessary for the figure, it comes with this, a long sword hunter, which is more so of a reference to one of the oldest images of Tyrex, uh, might be the Monster Hunter Freedom 2 uh, box art. But it's of Tigrex in the snow with uh, the Longsword Hunter. And they recreated that. I kind of wish it came painted, but knowing SH, that'd be an extra $15. Now, a size comparison doesn't really uh, work because I have no other figures out of the SH Monster Arts uh, Monster Hunter line. But I can do stand-ins. Here's the Lego Hungarian Horntail representing Rathalos. My custom painted Hammond Collection uh, Metricanthosaurus painted to look like an Anjanath. SH Monster Arts MonsterVerse Godzilla from 2019 to 2024. Because if you collect SH, you probably have at least one of these. And the Hayatoi scroll crawler, just for being a similar creature. And I like them. Now, because this is a video game boss that can be fought over and over and over, how about we do a little comparison between the two? So, you know you get a good idea of what we're supposed to be looking at. The color is completely wrong. It's as simple as even looking at the run renders of Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Rise, which this model is probably based off of the most, being a... I actually can't see if it's listed on a... the box itself, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, saying it's from Rise. If so, even with just the Rise model, the blue is way too bright, and the orange is supposed to be a uh, dirty yellow, kind of like up here and there. Not an orange. This isn't an actual tiger, despite the name being Tigrex. The fade is also way too much on the leg. The eye, 
which is not seen the best on Rage, because Rage has a different eye color, apparently. I'll, I'm not looking at the game currently. I'll fact check that in a second. I'm just looking at renders right now. The normal head, that doesn't look like a stark ember or stark emerald uh, color. Heck, it doesn't even have the green ridge around the eyes. That's just quite inaccurate. And it doesn't have enough striping on the head with scales, if we're going for complete accuracy. Uh, the stripes are very contrasty. If I pull up an actual render of the character from the game, which I will right now, it is kind of just a different shade of blue entirely. Especially with Rise, which appears to have darkened it. The wings are more of a sandy color in line with the body, rather than this really weird muddy colored wing that we get. The claws are actually a lighter color than the toes, which are only dark on top, with them still appearing to be sandy on the sides. Here we have a bunch of spikes, or whatever. Yeah, they are spikes. Here we have barely any. And that same size of spikes are mostly supposed to be along the where the gum line would be of the upper jaw on both sides. There is also supposed to be a bit of dark, uh, more claw-ish color along the eyes. That's not there either for both of them. I do like this figure, though. Even with all that, I'd say for me it's a pretty solid 7.8 out of 10. Is it worth the price, though? No. I got this figure at $100 off of Amazon, which is why it took so long for me to get it in the first place, since it released back in March. I paid $100 for this. If I paid 150 this could easily go down to a 6, maybe even a 5. Yes, it's good, but accuracy is terrible on this. The wing system is overly complicated with a lot of flaps and stuff, which I guess is because there's wings involved. But why couldn't we just get a swappable entire arm that... I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Also, more than just one accessory would have been nice. Or even like a swappable part, because in-game you could slice off the end of the tail. This series has stuff to work with, or even the breakable parts, like an extra, sure that'd be an extra upper jaw, but you can break the head. It'd be nice to have a broken head. That would be cool, but I don't think we're getting anything like that, unless it's a uh, 30th anniversary uh, version. Because they're not doing Tigrex for 20th, that's Rathlos and Zinogre. I do hope that SH actually gets around to doing a Gen 5 flagship, because we've gotten one for every generation of 1 through 4, and then we got Tigrex, who's a Gen 2. So we have 2 in Gen 2. I'm hoping, though, if we do get a Gen 5 representative as the next figure, Flagship-wise, I want it to be Malzeno or Velcana, but I really want Anjanath, it's my favorite. Anyways, I won't have another review up for a while unless I plan to review a figure I already own. Expect August if I don't do one in between then.